moving on from there, let me just summarize that Pinker sees language as based on a species-wide set of super rules that are universal to all languages. All languages adhere to those rules. Children know these rules without being taught. And these rules are arbitrary, right? That they could be different rules, but we all happen to have these set of rules that are specific to us, specific to humans, but um, that are common to all human languages, which is to say that right, he, he mentions Martians would have a different set of super rules. And then he also indicates that thoughts occur in a mentalese that's independent of language. Right? And this is very important because this is the way he's sort of setting up the way in which language is a separate module. Right? So language has this phrase, phrase structure that, that reflects the relatedness of ideas in mentalese, but it's not exactly the same, but it's the way that you get a sort of a, uh, a, a transition from mentalese to to uh, specific human languages through the phrase structure. The phrase structure is not a necessary part of how human language is structured, but in fact it, uh, it's, it's there basically because of the particular language organ that we have. And then uh, finally what we just went over, that words in language correspond to thoughts and mentalese, which in turn correspond to things in reality. Right? So this is kind of the overview of how he sees language functioning. And this is the basis upon which he's, he sees language as, as an instinct with a specific language module, right? So that's all of that, all of those characteristics of language lead him to this, um, this conclusion that language is a specific kind of organ in the brain um, because um, these universal of language exist and can't be learned uh, and don't also don't reflect the universals of thought. So it's, it's not as if the universals of language are really just, in fact, another way of stating universals of thought, um, which would be kind of closer to what uh, Peirce seems to be indicating, that, though it's, that's not what he really states, but I think it's, a, it's kind of a warrant for Peirce. Um, but in any case, I think the overall warrant then for Pinker then is that these complex rules cannot arise spontaneously, but must be pre-programmed. And it's not, you know, this, again here, this is something that he's not really arguing for explicitly, but it's kind of what's implicit in what he's saying is that, is that complex rules have to be pre-programmed, right? He doesn't have like the, you know, the clear evidence for this. He doesn't really say, look, this is where the programming happens or something like that, right? He's not like, he, he can't point to, 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 to where we can see that programming going on. Uh, and so that's why I, I'm going to call this a warrant, because he kind of assumes that it's a pre-programming rather than a kind of spontaneous development of these rules. And so language structures then, he sees then as specifically a kind of genetically programmed set of brain structures, right? And he's, you know, he kind of indicates uh, if there's a language instinct, it has to be embodied somewhere in the brain, and those brain circuits must have been prepared for their role by the genes that built them, right? And you, you notice the way he, he states it, he's, he's not really stating as, oh, here, here's where we see this happening. Uh, the brain circuit must have been prepared for their roles by the genes that built them. He's just saying, well, what other possibility is there? He, doesn't, he can't think of the other possibility, and so he says well, this must have happened. Right, and so that's where you in kind of, you, it's, it's, it's not exactly direct evidence here. It's just saying, well, look, the, you know, we've got these examples of brain damage, for instance, that lead to a specific kind of language deficit, right? And this language deficit is genetically passed on, so it must be genes that are doing this, right? Uh, and so he's got this different, you know, the, the evidence he uses for this are, uh, you know, examples of disorders that lead him to conclude this, but it's, you know, it's, it's not like he, he's actually showing us the way in which this genetic information is, is programmed in the brain, right? So there's not, he's not giving us kind of direct evidence, he's giving us a kind of circumstantial evidence for this, right? Um, and the warrant um, is really this, basically, uh, that's why I'm, I guess what I would call it kind of a warrant in, the, in that he's saying, well, th that, um, if things are 
passed on genetically, we have this, this, this evidence of things being passed on genetically um, that must indicate sort of genetically pre-programmed structures, right? Uh, again, you know, he's, he's making this argument in a way that's not a, a direct evidence, but a sort of circumstantial one, right? Uh, 